In Kazakhstan, the favorite hobbies are disco dancing, archery, rape, and table tennis. Just as with domestic violence and child sexual abuse, rape is another weapon used against men. Television often has it that rape is very common, and a woman is never more than a hair's breadth from being raped by some male predator. A woman can't get from A to B without fear of rape. The idea is very strongly presented that a man, any man, will rape a woman if he has the slightest chance. Even virtually impossible examples of rape are cited with gusto. Let us say it is somebody who is raped mm -hmm. by a sex uh, a pervert. Mm -hmm. Let us say that it's a young woman who is raped by her father. Yeah, this strange. woman should not, I'm giving the other right. side of an argument, uh, this woman should not, or this child, child well, she wouldn't be a child, so you can only get this if you're over 18. Who's been raped by her father or her uncle. Women seem to love the sound of the word rape, and media satisfies this desire, saying it as often as possible. And the so-called date rape pill, Rahipnol, can be ordered on the internet. Is that open smoke? That's open smoke. It really is rife these days. An estimated 30 women a week are drug raped in Britain. Dispatches investigates this growing epidemic. Clubbers are being warned to be on the lookout for a new type of date rape drug, spiked cigarettes. Women are now getting special inserts into their bottles to stop the millions of men out there drugging and raping them. A special cap which stops drinks being spiked with drugs is being launched in Soho today. The product, called a spiky, creates a secure seal over the neck of bottles, allowing only a single straw into the drink. All men are automatically suspects. This is a true case of original sin. Do you think that all men are potential rapists? <laughs> um. Oh, but of course they are. All men are potential rapists. Uh, all women are, are, are potential rapists equally. Uh, yeah, every man is capable of rape. Um, to then accuse the man of being a rapist, or, or of, really, of, of, of being a potential rapist, because he can do, is, is ridiculous. I mean, then every woman is, is a murderer, or a potential murderer, because they could murder somebody. The same sources that tell us that one in four women are victims of domestic violence tell us that one in four women are raped. There are a lot of other statistics out there. In fact, one set of statistics that absolutely um, floored me was from an organization which said that 95% um, of women, by the time they were age 18, had been sexually abused. And I was quite flabbergasted by this because, you know, for one thing, I wasn't in the 95%. And what it what, what I found out was that in their definition of sexual abuse, it included a lorry driver driving by and saying, hey baby. On the basis of 600 convictions, uh, I have seen the Home Office conclude that something like 60,000 rapes occur every year. And what they do, what they, the way the police um, uh, manufacture the rape data is by including all allegations made of rape are counted as rapes. They are included in the statistics. They include as rape all those women who have answered yes to the following question. Have you in the past 12 months um, ever engaged in sex when you were uh, not initially in the mood to do so, or words to that effect? They're very ambiguous with regard to whether or not a rape has actually occurred. But the Home Office counts uh, a tick at the box to all these ambiguous questions as if a rape actually occurred. Has a woman ever said no to sex and then changed her mind soon after? Yes. When you persuaded a woman to have sex with you, did you feel that you'd done anything wrong? No, because it was totally... She knew that if she said no, I mean, I, I persuaded women to have sex with me, and if they say... And they, but they know if they say no, um, then it's no. So initially, she might have said no, but then soon after that, things happened and she changed her mind? Yeah, or well, you just do some smoochy stuff and they change their mind. They know they're in control, and that's the basic thing. If a woman knows that, that, that she can say no and she's in control, then um, you've got a lot of room to manoeuvre there. Many of them are being misled by the questions, and the Home Office is then interpreting their answers to these rather pathetic questions in a manner which suits them. And so, for example, if a woman uh, claims that she has been um, 
during the past 12 months has been um, fondled against her will at any time or without her consent at any time, this will be regarded as a sex assault. Now, uh, it seems to me that probably any, any woman who is uh, having a relationship with a man will at some times be fondled by him at a time when she is not in, in the mood. And so the, the kind of answers that women give to these questions it depends very much on what they perceive the reasons is the reasons for the are the reasons for the questions. It's also worth pointing out that in the research published by the Home Office, some thirty percent of those women who were classified by the Home Office as having been raped themselves did not believe that they had been raped. In other words, even where the man doesn't believe he has raped a woman, and even where the woman doesn't believe she has been raped, the Home Office and the police nevertheless put her into the rape figures, which is outrageous actually. Um, but the public never gets to hear about these details. They simply believe the headline figures. As with domestic violence, the figures for rape are myths. The word rape is heavily misused, as are terms like sex attack and sexual harassment. Every twist, every turn, every fact and every figure is put into the pot of evidence in favour of a rape having been committed. It's in this manner that the Home Office and the police manage to pump up, pump up, pump up the uh, amount of alleged abuse that is taking place in this country. The list of false allegations of rape in the media is long. Here, a court has heard how a professional footballer, Terrell Forbes, and five other aspiring players subjected a 15-year-old girl to a horrendous 24-hour ordeal in which she was repeatedly raped and assaulted. Forbes, who plays for Grimsby Town, is one of six men who all deny charges of rape. In a completely separate case, police said this afternoon the Arsenal footballer Graham Stack has been charged with raping a young woman at his home in London. Now the alleged victim is believed to have told police she met both men at a nightclub in the West End before going back to uh, Graham Stack's flat. A chap in Minehead um, who were, was working at Butlins and uh, this girl accused him of raping her. I spoke to the mother, you know, the mother of the chap. And uh, anyhow, the, the girl admitted, she said, no, I made it all up, but a bit too late because he'd hung himself. For a start, I don't actually understand blokes that do rape women, OK? It's, it's a discount. I, I can't even imagine what they've got to be animals. So can you imagine being accused of doing that and everybody's believing it and, and even perhaps when you're clear there's, oh, you know, you, bit, it's, and you've got your name in the papers and it usually seems to take about a year or two years before it all comes to court. What do you do in that two years when, you, when if you're a teacher, you, you're, you're suspended from school or you're sacked during that time? So you, you can't find work because nobody's going to employ you and all your, all your neighbours are aware that you're up on a rape charge. So you regard rape as not an ordinary crime to be accused of? Not equivalent to...? Oh, no, I'd sooner be accused of nicking something than that, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> and if I hadn't nicked it, I, I wouldn't want to be accused of rape. That could, well, it could destroy everything, couldn't it? It could destroy your, your family life as well. You'd see them in the newspapers, blokes get their names splattered about on rape charges um, and then they suddenly find out, well no actually there was no case because she made it all up. We had foster girls here uh, and I know one or two of those used to make out they'd been assaulted in the streets because they'd, be, they'd got back late, you see. They, so rather than be told off for of getting back late, they'd make out, yeah one of them, she had the police running all around the, the town of Wales looking for this bloke that assaulted her. There was no bloke at all, he didn't exist. She told us. Well, I was getting back late, so I made up that some bloke got me. Is it why would they make up something so serious over something? You ask me. They made it up. Another one. She she said that the boyfriend of her, her mum had used to sexually assault her, and then when she was here, she said, oh, "I want to go back." 
and of course the social worker said well, yeah but you've got this chap he's back there surely that could uh, give you some problems and she thought oh she'd obviously forgotten that little story and when they went I said to her look I said I'm not going to tell the social workers I said but was that true did he no he still made it up I said what do you do that for I didn't like him so what you don't do is you don't put yourself in a situation where you're you're in a in a car alone with a woman that you don't know at all or in a lift alone with a woman you don't know at all because there's always that danger. Studies, for example, in America, such as one by Cannon, who investigated very closely um, 109 forcible rapes somewhere in the state of Indiana, a small town in Indiana, discovered that out of those 109 alleged forcible rapes, 45 were false allegations. Some 40% of women um, eventually retracted and changed their minds about what had happened to them. For women to make allegations of abuse against those who are close to them is nothing unusual. Given that some 5% of men and women um, do have these personality disorders, and in the UK alone this amounts to some 1 million women, it seems quite likely that the majority of allegations that are made to the police are made by women who have these dysfunctions. Sleeping with me is it's awful for me. No, George, it's not. It's not you. <laughs> Many women actually just love to see themselves as victims of abuse. It is a badge of honour which they wear with pride. Women have also been indoctrinated to see almost anything that men do as some form of abuse.